Biobalance HealthCast, episode 274, Aesthetic Procedures for Body Image Issues. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. This week we're going to be talking about aesthetic surgeries, plastic surgeries for body image issues. In our last podcast, uh, we talked about obesity and, and the bariatric surgeries that are used to treat morbid obesity and some of the after effect issues that people develop or experience once they've had that kind of surgery. Uh, so what we thought we'd do this week is talk about that some more in terms of what are treatments for those issues for the and body then part. for other uh, cosmetic uh, body image issues for which there are treatments, some of which are surgical and invasive, and some of which are non-surgical. Uh, can be done, in, can a doctor's be done in a doctor's office. Mm-hmm. So, so let's run through some of those things. Uh, with the the aftermath of the bariatric surgeries, one of the things that we talked about, and and I've forgotten the word panis. Panis uh, <laughs> is issues with panis. Tell okay. us about that. So, so the main issue with with uh, bariatric surgery is you lose so much weight. So even if you didn't have bariatric surgery, if you lost 100 pounds, you have extra skin. Mm -hmm. And if you're over 20 when this happens, your skin's not going back. You lose your plasticity. Yeah, it lose elasticity, Elasticity. kind of just like... Plasticity. so, So if you have a stomach that is out here... It's not like pregnancy because the hormones help you. The, when they when they go back, right. they help you bring bring it back in. Right. But if you have a stomach that's out here, and you lose that fat, which is inside your abdomen, it goes down. Then you have just think that much skin. It's not going in here. When you stand up, it's going to drop halfway to your knee. And it doesn't. You can't do f- five hundred million sit ups and make it, it go away. The mu- the muscle underneath it. Right. is disconnected from it. It's been so stretched, the muscle getting really hard and, and doing sit-ups doesn't pull all that skin in. Right. So you have a lot of skin. We call it an apron, and that's what the panis means. So it is an apron that, so you may be thin here, but you've got skin that hangs down over over your, so what you we call the mons. your office that literally tuck their stomach skin right. into their pants or jeans. Yes. Otherwise, to keep them from just hanging out. Yes. And it's wow. hard to find clothes yes. to do that. Yes. Because now they have thin legs. Or they wear moo-moos. Right. You know, or some kind un- of shift yeah. or some kind of big clothing Tense. to hide it. Right. And here they have gone through all this surgery or str- or other treatments to lose that much weight. Right. And, and they're now, proud of their success. They're proud of what they've done. They've saved their lives, but now they can't stand to look at themselves in or the they mirror. Have skin flat when they hold their arm out. That right. And everybody be, jokes about skin right. here. Yeah. Well, everybody, yeah. you know, everybody. My muscle has fallen. <laughs> it's under here now. Yeah. Well, yeah. a few weights will help you. But yeah. I mean, but when they've lost some of that, some right. of that yes. much fat, they have like a wing. Uh huh. So the surgeries for this involve removing skin. Wow. And I used to do... So you get seams or scar? I mean, like You get scars. So I used to do combined surgeries with the plastic surgeon. So I would do the hysterectomy. If somebody needed a hysterectomy, I'd say this is the perfect time to get this yeah. panis removed because that the skin not only is unsightly, but it causes infections. It causes yeast infections, rashes. Yeast. Uh, I mean, it's, it, yeah. you know, it's not good. So uh, we would take off this apron which is just like skin and we would remove it and then they would have an incision across their abdomen so that's great to get rid of this they can now wear normal clothing there but they also had like too much skin on their thighs so now their skin's falling down over their knees that's not pretty either Wow. And they have, they've successfully gotten muscle, and they've done all the good stuff. They've gotten their testosterone. They're feeling good. And then they've got, they can't wear shorts. They can't wear a dress. Their skin just falls down. So And that area beneath the belly button and above the pubic bone mm-hmm. that stretches out. Yeah. And there's a big wad of skin that hangs there mm-hmm. as well. So they remove, usually it's a combined procedure. Usually they'll do the panis and do a tummy tuck there. A tummy tuck. Okay. And so it's it's like a double procedure at one time, and then they'll do a, a thigh lift, which for most of us is not 
the answer because it leaves you with scars, sometimes down the side of your leg, sometimes here. So it's not always the answer for everybody who's got a tiny little bit of fat, that's not the answer. But if you have a lot of skin, then this is the answer. Okay, so, so I don't mean to be indelicate or ignorant. I'm trying not to be ignorant. <laughs> You haven't seen these procedures I have. No, but is there a way like to donate that skin to a skin bank for skin graft for people? That, no, I, I mean, I'm asking a serious question. On, I realize that, and I've never even thought of that. Because I know people. I never have even need thought skin of grafts, that. and they they get them from different parts of their body. Or they get them from they we use pig grafts. We use pig yeah. skin. Yeah. So you know? would that be a is that skin alive? Is it viable? Is yeah, it, it is. But I've never even considered that. But I'm sure plastic surgeons have because they do yeah. burns and other things that would use that. So I can't yeah, I answer. I think a burn bank would really. I can't it, answer that. Yeah. I but that know. would. But that may be a really, really stupid question, too. No, no, it isn't. I think it makes great sense. I just have never thought of it. And I usually think of stuff like that. So you beat me. Huh. Anyway, so so that's so that's two things that they need. They sometimes need to actually have, they usually have developed hernias in the muscles. Right. So they actually have to have the, the muscles A here. Hernia surgery. Hernia, hernia surgery while they're getting their tummy tuck. So that's very frequent. They have to have the skin, hopefully, you know, usually there's extra skin here, but we don't deal with that too much. But usually this skin has to be yeah. removed. So that means you're going to have a scar across the inside of your arm. And it's not going to be like an arm like. But you can still dress to cosmeticize that. I mean, you don't have right, to go but people who've like, lost that much weight and worked that hard don't want to have to dress themselves. like that. Right. They're so happy, yeah. and I've seen some amazing surgeries. One of my patients had it all done at once. She lost hundred pounds. Oh my god! She went in, had everything done. She looked amazing, and she still does. Yeah. She just and, and that motivated her never to get past that ten pounds. She might gain ten pounds, then she go. I've got to stop this now because I'm never going to go back to where I was. Because you can still stretch your skin out more. Skin is very stretchy. So she's like, I'm not doing the surgery again. I'm not doing. I'm not doing bariatric surgery. I'm not doing plastic surgery. I'm going to just, you know, decrease stay my right eating and stay. exercise. Right. And so she would always just a little bit up, like most of us, mm -hmm. a little bit up, a little bit down. You know. So, so she looked really good, and it takes. The best plastic surgeon to make you look, really look good in this circumstance. And there we have some wonderful plastic surgeons in the city. Absolutely. So, so that is an example of surgeries from an outgrowth of a life-threatening <clears throat> illness that right. are necessary. Post-obesity surgeries. Post-obesity surgeries. But there are other body image issues that people suffer from. Uh, like a port wine stain or a birthmark. Well, let's or, let's go to let's go to body. Let's go to continue with body, but okay. in people who aren't morbidly obese. Okay. So many. Pe let's start with young people. Some people, you know, we we have this image of women because mm -hmm. models and clothes mm -hmm. look better on six foot tall women who ha who weigh one hundred and ten pounds. France just passed a law. <laughs> models in France that are are believed to be too, th too thin actually have to have a doctor's note that they're not anorexic and they're not suffering from an eating disorder because and they're order, not taking diet pills to stay in, that in way order to, yeah well my daughter used to my daughter used to model and you don't have to be an anorexic to work for these these no. photographers because they said you can't eat for two days it's liquids for two right. days before you, you have a shoot. And the day that you have the shoot, you have to drink broth only, but very low sodium broth. Right. I mean, she was dehydrated. She was starving. That sounds and, like wrestlers, swimmers, cheerleaders right. and the, for, for youth, and the, and models. The, and the right after the shoot, then the, the photographer gave her uh, vegetable and beef soup so she could eat. After the shoot, but right. she was starving during wow. the time. And I'm watching this going, this is not this? healthy. I was there. I mean, I'm like, I'm watching this because I didn't really trust. You know, I just, she was 15. Yeah, you never trust photographers. She was a she. Yeah. She, I didn't mean that. I just didn't trust the, the process. So, of course, I was a, I'm a mother hen. So I was watching and I was yeah. making sure everything was fine. But I was thinking, this doesn't seem right. It isn't healthy. I hope she doesn't continue to do this. So, and she didn't. It was fine. In any case, this is this is the kind of thinking for mm -hmm. models. But when we look at when we look at Us Magazine, when we look, at, I mean, you guys have to know that those aren't really untouched pictures. Well, 
That's those are all touched up. You can go to your photographer and go, you know what, I'm a little bit thick here, so I want you to cut this out. And they can just go like this, and then you look like you've got a waistline. I mean, seeing people in but person is different. you can also go different. to a doctor now and do that. Right. So you can either have it done on on the print, or you can have it done <laughs> by your real body. Yeah. Right. But but I'm so we're talking about people who who look at themselves and they say, I want to be better. I want to look like either I used to, you know. So I used to have a twenty four inch waist <laughs> a long time ago. That was a long time ago. I'm never getting there again. I don't really want to. That would look weird on me. But at certain ages, we're better at a low weight. When we're younger, we look better at a low weight than we do. We should gain about 10 pounds or more by the time we hit 50 over our high school or college weight. So so that's something that's a truism or more. Or more. When I got married at 19, I weighed 140 pounds. I know, but was, you were starved. Yeah. yeah. It's like a concentration camp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so let's just say healthy women when they were in high school and college, yeah. healthy men when they were in high school and college, people who were actually fed. Yeah. <laughs> so in any case, this is something you should have more weight on. That's normal. But if you have a reasonable desire to lose your waistline or to, or to make it smaller or to lose the fat on your hips, because honest to God, people are born shaped like a pear, not, not necessarily like this. Right. So they see things in society and they go, I so want to wear those like jeans. I want to yeah. look like that. Right. And so the things that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. have to do with losing fat in the places that you want to lose so it's it. It's kind of a body sculpting thing. It is a body sculpting thing. So it's, so we talked about morbid obesity. Now we're just talking about fat in the wrong places. Like a double or triple chin. Right, right. And so Now there's a procedure for now, that. Yes, now, now there is... Um, it's called, I actually had to write it down because Kybella. I haven't said it that many times. Kybella is an injection. They have a big sports store out west. K Y B E L L A. Oh, no, that's a different So there's a, so they inject over, and they may have to do it four or five times, they inject a um, substance that, that actually dissolves. It's quite like lipodissolve, only it's not a natural substance. It's a, Which is a term we'll explain in a little while. But it dissolves the fat. In this area, and then your body absorbs it, and then you it, it, it swells, it hurts. It's not you know, it's not without it's not discomfort. without pain, but you don't have to go under anesthesia. And, and then you just urinate that out, or poop yeah, that you out? poop it out. Okay, that goes out the bowels. Okay, so you have, but you have to be able to have a good lymph system to pick it up and get rid of it, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to have a really expert injector. And it is painful. And I mean, it, there's a lot of things that that you have to go through it's not, it's just to working. get rid of this. Right. And and some people are talking about using it in other parts of the body. It's not FDA approved for that, but but, but it's but it is a lot like what people used to do with with lipodissolve. It's the same substance, only it is so what, synthetic. What is lipo lipodissolve is people used to go in and get um, an area like the fat on their back. They'd have it injected with this this um, natural substance, which is like Kybella, and it would dissolve the fat in that area, and then your body would absorb it, but it left dimples, and it left, I mean, it didn't leave a smooth skin. I, uh, I mean, I've seen people do this, and it doesn't look pretty when it's over. So, so it dissolve it ended up some being, of the fat cells mm -hmm. in pockets and leave others. Yes. So it wasn't like a clean shave to get rid of it. Right. How does that compare to liposuction? So liposuction is a surgery. You Sometimes there are different kinds of liposuction. Sometimes you can do it awake in a doctor's office or a surgery center. But in general, you go to sleep, and the doctor takes a big, a long suction tip. Like on your vacuum cleaner. Like on your vacuum yeah. cleaner, only thinner and sterile. Makes a, a little cut in the area. Say they were doing your back, because that's very common. Women develop fat here, and they don't like it. So so they say, mm, I can't wear any of my dresses. I need to get rid of this. Swimsuit season. It's an area, usually an area about like this. And then they, they go in like... I mean, it's a it's a very your doctor has to be strong and have stamina. It's exercise, yeah. And they have to shove it in there underneath your skin. And I've on, seen videos of that where they I mean, have this bag that just fills with fills this with yellow, that, fat. yellow, red, fat. yeah. And so it, they suction it out, but they never suction it all out. It's like a dirt devil, except for your fat. 
Don't even say that because somebody's going to do that. <laughs> please, please. It is a whole. It is an yeah, entirely right. different. No, you read stories about people that inject concrete in their blood. Yeah, well, please, please. please. We aren't doing. We aren't even discussing that here. Um, in any case, it is a suction procedure. They suck out fat, but they don't suck it all out because if you did, you would dimple. Mm. So they suck out. You have to have a very expert person doing this so to the make surface it. The surface keeps the fat, yeah. and right underneath that surface, just a few millimeters, all the fat sucked out. Okay. And then you're going to have to wear a compression garment. Now, the deal with a compression garment is it holds, it pushes your skin and fat back against the fascia, holds so it there so you heal reconnect. that way yeah. instead of just letting it hang which is not a good thing. So you have to wear a compression garment afterwards. It takes, the surgery is very expensive and it takes six weeks to even look like you did before the surgery because there's swelling. So if you oh, were doing so you it here. Oh, you can't do it today for a wedding next week. No. I mean, it's, it's more than six weeks that wow. it takes to recover to where you started. And then you start seeing the effects mm -hmm. because all the fluids in there is healing. So your body's been disrupted. The good news about liposuction that I really love and no other procedure does is it removes the toxins you've stored in your fat. We store all our toxins in our fat. That's why we don't want you to eat fat of animals or fat of chickens. That's where the toxins are. We want uh -huh. you to get rid of the fat. We so we should if when we get su fat sucked out, our bodies actually lose toxins. We actually feel better. So that's the part that I kind of like about it. Okay. Now, if you do lipo dissolve, your toxins are still in there. They may recirculate and deposit somewhere else. Ooh. Say and that's the same with some of these other procedures that destroy the fat. So lipo dissolve swept the nation a few years back, and everybody thought, "Oh, that's the solution." But because of the skin dimpling and the the toxicity remaining, and they picked their patients wrong, and they guaranteed it. There is no guarantee for this. Yeah, because. When you get liposuction, if you remove any fat from your body, your body makes you so hungry. I don't care how you do it. Your body's going, ah, I just feed lost me. my fat. Feed me, feed me. I mean, it's like, it's that like plant in a little shop of horrors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but not everybody is old enough to remember that. Seymour. <laughs> but they are, your body is asking for food. So you are more hungry than you will usually be. So you have to either have. Uh, an appetite suppressant, or you have to be on a specific diet that you are not going to gain that weight back because you could gain it back. Yeah. Any way you remove fat, you can get it right back because fat cells can be really tiny, or if you don't have a lot of them, they can get really big and fill up with fat. Your body's very adjustable. So we're fighting the, the really good adjustable part of our body by doing this. However, if you know that, if you know you're going to be hungry, if you know that it takes six weeks for you to even start looking better, and you have to work from if you know lines. right, if you know all these things about liposuction, and you know that you're going to remove some toxins, you're going to feel a lot better when it's over. I mean, not just prettier, not just thinner, better, mm -hmm. because that that part of the of the toxins have been removed. So you just have to keep it off. Now, if we look at what I do in my office, I don't I'm not a plastic surgeon. I don't do anything that's surgical. So but you don't do liposuction. I don't do liposuction and we don't we aren't going to do the Kybella because it's so painful and so swole. I mean, I tend not to want to hurt my patients, so most everything I do is to minimize pain. Lower down on the tolerance scale. Yeah, yeah, I just don't yeah. I just don't know that they would be happy if so you, I did that. You do a procedure called I lipo. I lipo. And that's and what? Is that a a laser? It's a laser. And it's a laser that does not hurt. You put these paddles, there's like they're about that big each, and you put the say you wanted to get rid of your stomach and you had you had under the skin fat, that's what it fixes, not the fat that's in your belly. So if you've got a big belly like this, that's inside. It's not going to do anything to that part. Right, right, right. But if you have a belly that just has little ripples of, of you know fat you just can't get rid of. This is perfect. So, so this laser is set to burn at a point. It doesn't burn all the way through. Well, it's about and that thick, and it only it only goes down to about here. So, but it burns at the point, and so it can go underneath the skin and the surface fat that you want to maintain your mm -hmm. skin texture, and then dissolve the fat that's under that. Right. But doesn't burn through further to things. And it doesn't that, really. It, it it is burning, but it's not burning. 
it, it, it's at a specific Dissolving. level. It actually, it does attach. It's melting the fat. Yeah, it is melting, but it's not like a burn. Right. And you don't feel, it, you may feel warm, but that's it. Yeah. So it has all kinds of little holes in it that go that are that go into the skin through the skin don't touch the skin right but hit the fat and then they they break it up mm -hmm. and then you have all this liquid fat that that's why we do one area at a time because your body can't handle more fat than that and then your lymph system picks it up so we give you a specific eye lipo serum that activates the lymph system and makes you pick it up and poop it out the perfect the perfect treatment is you get your treatment and you actually shrink during that treatment. Wow. You you can see a difference you in your measurements. Weeks for a change. No. And you don't So you can get ready for the wedding. Yes, you can. This is yeah. and, and you should do eight treatments and you should do at least two a week. And you should be using this uh, I Lipo serum. Cellulite Serum and at home as well as after the procedure. And you should not go home and eat more. We're the, here's what I described this as the sun or anything no. like that. Mm -mm. Okay. This is completely below the skin. So this works so well if you don't compensate by eating too much. Or, okay, or so drinking. so or drinking alcohol. We try not to have you drink alcohol for the for the uh, month or month and a half that it takes to do okay. this. So the idea is. We're burning fat in the place you want it, not all over your body, not in your face, not not in not you know in your calves. Not, I mean, we're burning it where you want it, and we're getting rid of it where you want it. But it's like if you ran a marathon. If you ran a marathon, you lose weight all over, and then you'd be so hungry, and then you go eat. Right? Your body thinks it's it's run a marathon. So we just dissolve it, and then we also have you set up on a weight loss program. To keep the fat off. So we've we get rid of it. You keep it off. We've talked about invasive surgeries. We've talked about non-surgical procedures for fat. Mm -hmm. But what about some of the other things that you do for body image issues or cosmeticized mm -hmm. issues? Uh, things like fillers. Right. We use so so. <laughs> the thing about aging is you gain fat in places you've never had it before. Right. And you lose it in your face. So fillers are really just. Filling in where you had fat when you were younger, and so it. If you, fill, as you get older, you get gaunt. Yeah, as you get older, your cheeks Wrinkled. your cheeks get yeah. like this. So we put filler in your cheeks. Radius. I love that product because we we put one needle hole here. We fill up the cheek. It looks like you're filling up a balloon. And here, and people walk out looking 15 to 20 years younger. I mean, it's like they just, it, it pulls the whole face up. Without it, a facelift. Without a facelift. Without this surgery. is in the office. No anesthesia. You just have a little gel on that's numbing you. Mm -hmm. And you have a complete transformation. I just love that stuff. Hmm. Because cheeks are everything. And you don't think that because you're looking at the circles or you're looking at the skin that's hanging down here. It's your cheeks that got flat. It's not no. this other stuff. And when you fill the cheeks up, you don't have circles. But my wife pulls says living out. with me has caused her to get like frown wrinkles in right. between and her so, eyes. Okay, so that's another thing that we do. We do Botox. And Botox stops you from being able to frown. So, it, so I can still give her the causation. She just can't get the satisfaction. She can't just look like she's mad at you. She can be mad at you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. You so, yeah, even young people get Botox now because, like my daughter said, you know, if I don't do it, my patients think I'm mad at them. I'm just thinking, <laughs> you know, because she just oh, she funny. just does this. Yeah. She doesn't want to have that that. And I of course do it because I can't show you what it is. <laughs> I can't frown effectively. So yes, I take, take I do all this stuff because I have the machines and I have the people and why not? But um, and it makes well, me feel. You believe that it's helpful. Medically, it makes me you feel believe better that about helpful. myself. People who feel better about themselves behave better with themselves in terms of how they exercise and how they eat and how they care for themselves. Right. If I, and if, so it's a composite package. And I better be doing everything I ask people to do. Well, yeah. You, I, should be the, I should be the example. Uh -huh. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. We do many other things that make people feel better about themselves. Um, birthmarks. We remove birthmarks. We remove tattoos. tattoos. We, remove, uh, we remove brown spots, which makes you look old and is a precancerous lesion. You know, with lasers, it's not, you don't have to go to sleep. So, so there are health 
substantiating health giving, mm -hmm. non-surgical, cosmeticized treatments mm -hmm. for improving body image. Yes, there Check are. Check them out. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.